The last couple of days I've been testing out RPCS3 on my new PC just to put it through its paces. After all, it's still the most demanding emulator out there. And I must say, while most games run fine and could be considered playable, performance was sometimes a bit sketchy. And none were more so than Infamous and its sequel. However, when someone commented about lossless scaling, it reminded me that I actually have the software in my Steam library. It's been right there for over a year, and I didn't use it. If you're wondering why, I just wasn't impressed by it back then. When I used it with games, there were lots of graphical anomalies that kept distracting me. But the software has received several updates in the meantime, and I really need better performance for the more demanding games on RPCS3. So let's see how it went. The easiest part was setting it up. There really wasn't much to understand. Basically, the software allows you to do two things, which is frame gen and AI upscaling. As for frame gen, choose the latest version because it works the best. And under scaling, choose the NIS version. It wasn't perfect, and I'll expand on that later, but it definitely yielded the best results for me. It's even better than FSR. Once that's done, go ahead and launch RPCS3. Don't close lossless scaling though, because the program needs to remain open. I'm going to run Infamous 2 again, just to see if the program can improve performance and perhaps make the graphics look a bit better. Lossless scaling is open in the background, but doesn't work automatically, unless you activate it with shortcut keys. Just press Ctrl Alt and S and watch as the software starts kicking in. You'll see a counter on the top corner of the screen. The numerical value on the left is your real frame rate, while the one on the right is the perceived one. Frame gen essentially tricks the naked eye into believing that the on-screen frame rate has been doubled. It hasn't really, but the result is that performance is much smoother. So let's see how frame gen affects Infamous 2. This street is actually a good way to test performance, since it's really busy with pedestrians and vehicles. Normally things would get a bit framey, but thanks to the software, everything's pretty smooth. Another place to test performance is on the rooftops, where you're sliding on the electrical wiring. Once again, things look pretty smooth, and I must say that there's practically no input latency either. Since Infamous 2 has bugs when running above 720p, using the software's upscaling feature is almost a must. However, like I said earlier, there are some unavoidable compromises. Any game with lots of motion blur, like Silent Hill Downpour, for example, will have strange shimmering due to the upscaling effect. And depending on how post-processing is applied, you may also notice artifacting around water. It's not that bad, but obviously you would rather play without it if possible. So in my opinion, you should only use the software if a game's struggling with performance. So let's look at a few more games that pushed my hardware and see if lossless scaling helped any. And we may as well start with one of the most demanding games, which is The Last of Us. I know it's now on Steam, but I was just curious. It ran okay for the most part, but when things got busy, performance dropped quite severely. It wasn't that uncommon to see frames in the high teens or low 20s. Doubling frame rates clearly has its benefits. When using lossless scaling, those demanding scenes were now just about bearable. I'm not one for cinematic experiences in my games, and this was my first time playing The Last of Us, but even I could see myself finishing it, perhaps sometime in the future. God of War 3 is another fan favourite that's hard to get running on PC, although performance is not as bad as The Last of Us. Frame rates were generally okay, and wouldn't go below 30 for the most part. I had to tweak a lot of the emulator's settings just to get the game to boot. Still, frame gen helped to make the experience so much better. One thing the software won't help with are the stutters caused by shader compilation. Those are inevitable with a game like God of War, and incidentally was quite constant with The Last of Us as well. It's just something we have to deal with, unfortunately. Despite this, I was quite happy with performance. Red Dead is still demanding on RPCS3. It's one of those games that just can't play at a constant 30. It's perfectly fine when you're out on the prairie or riding your horse through a canyon. But once you're in settlements, like the town or even the homestead, your frames could tank into the low 20s. Considering my hardware, that's very depressing. 
but at least lossless scaling helps to soften the blow. It's truly remarkable software. First-person shooters really benefit from higher frame rates, but especially a game like Killzone 2, which has generally sluggish controls. Bad performance would have made it even worse and probably added more latency. Again, lossless scaling comes to the rescue in this case, making the overall experience much more acceptable. Can I just say how good this would be as a proper PC port? Imagine playing with a mouse and keyboard. I've played Uncharted 2 on real hardware, and while the game is alright, performance can be very spotty. It pushed the console very hard, and the same can be said of the emulator. Shader compilation causes havoc with frame times, causing dips and spikes for almost the entire playthrough. There's not much that lossless scaling can do in this case, except maybe smoothen things out a bit. That summed up the most demanding games I played the last couple of days. I also played Gran Turismo 5, Motorstorm Pacific Rift, Resistance 2, and Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, and none of them really needed lossless scaling. They didn't push my PC at all. But okay, I hope you found this informative. If you approve, please give a like. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.